Yeah, I'll play some music. Yeah. yeah. Um, are we all set? Yes. Say yeah. when. Yes. Okay. <laughs> all right? Yeah. Okay, we're on the air, I think. Um, I'm going to talk today about uh, uh, the first tool in the, in the supplement packet, which is called Five Process. Um, normally, if you're going to harmonize something, there are several ways to do it. So, just let's just take a major scale, just a C major scale. If I were to harmonize that, there's a couple of ways I could do it. One, I could just hold a C chord and move notes on top as best I could. All right? I could do it that way. Or I could do it this way. Um, Tonically, one chord, two chord, three chord, four chord, five chord, six chord, uh, seven chord, back to one. Okay. Or we can do what I'm doing here. Instead of moving things either parallel or letting them lie stationary, if you just use the five chord, what you get, you get an automatic voice leading. I'll show you with some basic chords first. C major scale again. So here's a C chord. there was I went one, five, one, five, one, etc. Just going right up the scale. Now, remember, if you have a five chord, then you can use any substitutes you want. In other words, if, if the melody, again, melody important, just playing the scale, but as you know, all melodies are made of scales and arpeggios. So, if, if uh, <clears throat> you can take a seventh chord, make it a flat nine or a sharp five, whatever it is. With a major scale, you're not going to run into much of that because there's no altered notes. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, but let me show you something here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use some simple diminished substitutes for G7. As you know, if I play B7 or D7 or A flat or F, those are all F you know, all diminished chords that substitute for G7. Because the diminished works in minor thirds. Okay, so watch this. One, five, one, five. Now E minor for C, E minor seventh. Now, now remember when I get to these, I can go or whatever color I want, because the melody is being covered. Let's see if I can say on the same set of strings. Um, now I even substituted a diminished but on the seventh seventh of the uh, scale, B natural. So, you know, if you, for example, if you take that scenario. And you intersperse it with other things, you know, like you can, like we said before, we can play one, two, three, four. So I could say, um, I played a couple of tight voicings, you know, things like so. So you can intersperse things. What's important at this point, talking about the tool itself, I call it a tool. Most people say, well, you know. The scales uh, are the tools, you know, the scales and arpeggios. I think of that more, even though they are tools, of course, I think of them more like the toolbox. And I throw these different orchestrational devices in to help the scales. So, but you hear, so you hear one, and all the inner voices move by themselves. You just go one five one, and you could write that out for saxophone section or a trumpet section or anything, and it sounds really good. Uh,
see, so I'm, what I'm doing there, play the old melancholy baby, right? So I'm taking and I'm using some of that, but the melody is so diatonic in the key of C. Or just... So I can color that any way I want. particular device that I use is approach from above and below from above that's actually the next tool in the box you know, so you got a little hint of things to come uh, now remember now we've only covered one color and there are basically three colors as as you know uh, there's major and then there's minor and there's dominant <clears throat> so since we're talking about major scale, you see the one five, one five. Okay, now if we do, if we do um, minor, let's just take minor second. Um, that would be, I'm going to play a B flat major scale or Dorian. Okay, I'm going to play that one instead of E flat. Um, a quick note about that, why? Uh, if you play... Uh, you know any minor chord if you play its relative minor it wants to stay you know if I if I play D minor and I play you know see that's a F major scale relative major of D minor you hear the chord it wants to stay there if I play the, the C major scale which is be like Dorian right C scale from starting from D you know See, it wants to move to five one. So, what I'm going to do in, in this thing, while we do, we're going to play the C C minor scale, but in this case, it's going to be the C Dorian with the A natural. So it's a B flat major scale for those who are keeping score. Um, so now, again, we could do the same thing, you know. on top and then of course we can move that you know we can move it diatonically you know I play a little bit of harmonic minor and my ears just made me do that sorry but <laughs> I have a bad habit of correcting myself on the fly anyway so let's take the same scale and harmonize it with a five chord so what I'll do is I'll play C minor, and then I'll play G7, C minor, G7, C minor, G7, and I'm going to put the sharp 5 in there because not good in the minor key. Minor. Okay, and that's an 11th. Okay, one thing really nice about... Uh, about minor chords and dominant chords. You can not only use a dominant five, but you can use a minor five. Listen to that. Now I'm going to play C minor, G minor. And that, that's a real pretty I love that sound. And of course, the Brazilians use that a lot. They'll use a, a minor five chord for a normal five chord. You know, if, if the chord would normally be for us a, say, a G7, and if we didn't play a G7 sharp five, they would just play, you know, a straight G minor seventh chord 
for five chord. And it sounds good to them and it also sounds good to me. So um, so that would cover us for, for minor. Uh, Toots. Sometimes I played the minor five, sometimes I played the dominant five. So that's a that's a real good sound. Um, let me give you maybe a little example of the major. Uh, a song like uh, like starting the bridge. See, one five, one five, one five. Now notice, I put in one little extra melody note there so I can make it an even number. Five, one, five, one. We're going to B flat minor. So, instead of going back to B flat, I'm going to F to B flat minor. So, one more time. The, the, the voice leading to I'm keeping everything the same kinds of inversions, right? Most mostly one five seven three, you know. Uh, anyway, uh, all right. So let's let's get to dominant, and of course that would be mixolydian, just a simple F scale. Um, Scale, and of course, uh, you could put uh, and, you know any kind of mixture you want. Two notes per chord, one note per chord. It really doesn't matter when you're doing it just diatonic. However, if you're using if you're using the uh, uh, the five process, I'll play the C seven. So now listen. Minor five, C seven instead of a dominant, dominant minor, dominant minor, minor. Oh, I'm sorry, dominant minor. So I'm going back and forth. So you can play, or you can play. So you end up uh, getting that that two five or five two sound. What it does is it uh, it gives you constant resolution. Now, uh, f for example, you know if you have songs that uh, linger on on chords for a long time, you know, like the, those minor tunes. You know, 
both kind of, let's say you're staying on a minor song for a long time. Um, now, you know, there's several ways you can handle that. Of course, you can play just uh, you know, that modal type. Okay, or you could play, uh, you know, arpeggios. You could play that sound. Of course, the blues works. out. If you use the five process and play off of this sound, even though they're playing, even though they're playing um, uh, minor, you know, even though they're playing, you know, panic diatonically, that that kind of uh, that kind of sound, you can still play the five process. So what I'm doing there is I'm playing of the D minor and playing D harmonic minor or B flat melodic. You know, all the things that you normally do. You know, but but what we're doing is is we're putting them in a place where they normally aren't. In other words, because the chord says D minor. Okay. So what I'm doing is I'm making resolution where there is none. Okay. That's what that's what Bach did, you know, that's what all the great composers did, so you need to do this too, you know, so, um, so I'm playing kind of off of that. Instead of just, now you don't have to do it all the time, because remember the sound that you're getting is more of a, guys will use more half-step type. You know, you can get away with those kinds of things too. I'm just saying that this is a viable option to some of the, uh, uh, to some of the things that you normally do. And I would think that most guys who, who play jazz would, would be hip to the other things I'm talking about. But this particular tool, is an orchestrational device you hear it on TV and you know all the time you hear orchestras do this all the time um, and of course good you know piano players and guitar players also um, but if you think about it like a tool you can make it work in a lot of other places that maybe you wouldn't normally use it and what it does it gives you more color and more option Look for voice leading. I mean, look, just watch my left hand. You know. Let's see. I'm messing up my own thing here, sorry. The uh, melancholy baby that I played a while ago is a good example of combining the diatonic and and, and me just moving with the melody in half steps and using the five process. You know, uh, another one. Well, check it out. Normally. Uh, Watch this. Uh. See, so I got five process to the five chord. Now flat fifth away. Okay. So I mean, you can use it. You know, anytime you have a scale passage tune that's laying there like a dead duck, you know, 
and you have the time and opportunity. <coughs> what I mean by that is sometimes <coughs> at the quicker tempos, you don't want to attempt that because you end up playing that sloppily, you know. But if the tempo is right and you feel comfortable doing that kind of thing, you can really add a lot of, uh, of, of harmony to your chord melodies, you know, to your little orchestrations. And think of them more as orchestrations rather than chord melody. You know, you know that, all that means is I play a chord and I play a melody on top of it, you know, or underneath it. You know, uh, if you think of it more as an orchestration, then you can have it moving any way you want because you know I, you can play you can play that but I could also play uh, see I can play that way too you know it doesn't it doesn't have to be it can be you play anything else one note and a, you know a chord with one note a chord with two note melody a chord with three with four it just depends how much you know you want to I mean you can play I don't like that sound but <laughs> you can do it you know you the guys play it oh god I hate that <laughs> you know forgive me forgive me guitar players and god but that just drives me crazy um, anyway, and you know, we really haven't talked about, other than uh, voice leading, we, uh, what I was saying is to keep, you know, like inside voicings, you know, keep the same inversion of a chord as much as possible. You can't do it all the time because melodies skip all over the place. And then again, we got tempo problems, you know, you might want to have to jump an octave. And if it's a quick tempo, you know, you, you know, you might as well just play you know, jump up and grab one of them, or if you can't, if you can, you know, so, anyway, um, well, I think that's about all for this subject that I could do other than, you know, play some more tunes and stuff like that, or pieces of tunes, but I think you get the idea, so just in review, we have a major chord, we have a minor chord, and we have a dominant chord, static, in other words, laying there like a dead duck. So I'm playing just a simple major scale. Of course, that major scale could be a melody, which we talked about. Um, now, uh, w there are three codes to deal with. So if you're playing 1-5-1-5 one, five, one, five, on a major chord, you're basically stuck with one dominant five, major dominant five, okay? Major one, dominant five, etc. But on the minor chord, you can play minor, dominant five or minor minor five in other words c minor g minor c minor g minor same thing with with c7 c7 g7 c7 g7 or c7 g minor c7 g minor okay and just to go back to uh and make things uh uh symmetrical here <laughs> the major would be c major g7 c major g7 and remember, as melodies alter, you know, for example, you, if you have a, a, a C melody, like we were talking about, and it happens to have hit a, a, a five chord with a, a, a D sharp in it, you've got a sharp five. And if you happen to end up on a C chord, you know, C, and you can play the G7 with the sharp five, you know, what, whatever's in the scale, you can make the alteration off of the five chord. And if it doesn't interfere with the melody, you could do that anyway. In other words, you could play a, a G 13th and then play with the flat 5 or on the sharp 5. You know, if you have a flat 9 for a melody. So you could, you could play all of those different things. And, and pieces of them. I'm playing the G, you know, not, you know, it's a polychord, A over G7. So, so that scenario will work in any kind of orchestration. And no matter what um, inversion of, or type of chord, tight voicing, loose voicing, doesn't matter. Uh, it, the device or tool can be used in all those scenarios. 
Anyway, I, I think that about covers it, or at least that's how much as my brain has to offer you today. <laughs> <laughs> okay, turn the thing off, Rob.